Hi, everyone. Thank you all for getting on the call. Um, and thank you, Eric, for being our speaker tonight. Eric Johnson is the creator and CEO of TeamZ. He's been a professional business coach for 16 years, has trained over 100,000 network marketers in the last three and a half years. He is a husband, a father, and a lover of people. I'm in my finishing my second Team Z 12-week boot camp, and I just signed up for my third. So Eric, take it away, and thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the great introduction. I love it. Um, okay, so my name's Eric Johnson. I'm excited to be with you all tonight. We're going to have some fun. Um, I just want you to kind of warn you ahead of time. I'm going to throw a lot of content at you. You may feel like you're sipping water through a fire hose. Get ready to take some notes. We are recording the call, so no big deal. If you miss something, you can come back to it. Um, but what I want to do tonight is I'm going to take you into Teamsy. For those of you who haven't seen it, I see a lot of new, new names and faces that I haven't met. So, so hopefully it'll be some, something new for you guys. I'm going to show you Teamsy, how to set it up, how easy it is to use, how you can easily uh, connect with 20 people a day in less than 30 minutes in Teamsy. This, this is gonna, you're going to love it. It's going to make you so unbelievably efficient and effective in your business. But before that, I want to give you a little bit of training on... Um, hold on, I'm just going to mute everybody. I mute myself. Right? No, I'm still good. I'm going to give you a little bit of training on relationship marketing, which is the system Teamsy is built on. So Teamsy is more than just a, a, a software application that's going to make your life unbelievably easy. It's actually an approach to the business. It allows you to systematically build relationships so you can have a sustainable and fun business without ever feeling like a Nikki salesperson. Okay, so I'm going to take you through a little bit of, of that philosophy of relationship marketing, then we'll jump into Teamsy. I will stay on for a full Q&A, so if you have questions, I'm happy to stay on and answer them. As long as you guys have questions, I'm happy to answer them at the end. I'll keep you all muted just to kind of you know, keep distractions to a minimum. If you feel the spirit move you and you can't wait till the Q&A, that's okay. Just unmute and go for it. I can handle it, okay? Sound good? All right. Whew, I feel like I already gave you a mouthful. It was just my intro. All right, so let's start here with this. This is what I wanna to talk to you about first. How to systemize your success with relationship marketing to become a power hour boss, okay? And by power hour boss, this is what I mean. You can get all your DMO done in less than one hour, no matter how big your business goes, forever, okay? With Teamsy, that's pretty cool, right? Then you have time to uh, run around and enjoy your life. So, so my backstory, just to introduce myself a little deeper, um, my background is not in direct sales. My background is in business coaching and development and consulting. I've been a professional business coach going on 16 years. I come from a totally different industry, real estate mostly, helping real estate people build their businesses. Um, and, and I've specialized in building business by relationship. I fell into um, network marketing about, gosh, about five years ago by accident. I found some products that really helped me, changed my life. And I, I was really excited about what they were doing for me. I looked at the business opportunity and said, you know, this is actually a really amazing opportunity. I'd always had kind of a the bad, believe the bad, sti bad stigma about network marketing. And looking at the business opportunity, I thought I should do this on the side. This is a great way to build another stream of income. The problem was I only had an hour a day, maybe, if even that much. And I know a lot of you can relate. I had a full-time job. I have four kids. I had things going on. I wanted to do it. I just wasn't sure if I had enough time to do it. But I knew as a professional business coach that if I could find the right tools to leverage my time, that I could do it. So I started looking for the tools. And so long story short, in our industry, I couldn't believe it, 100 million people in direct sales worldwide, and there were no tools, at least nothing compelling, nothing easy enough for me to use, and certainly nothing based on relationships. So we built Teamsy. I, I had, knew some smart guys that I worked with in real estate on software. I said, Hey, can you guys build this for me? Let's see. I think there's a market for it. And we launched it three and a half years ago. So just to kind of give you guys an idea of what's happened in those three and a half years, we've had more than 80,000 network marketers use Teamsy, which is um, like astounding to me. And Deborah, Deborah mentioned that I've trained over a hundred thousand people. That's from my house on zooms like this, which is it's really humbling and amazing. So I'm excited to be sharing it with you tonight. Just so you guys know too, um, our Active Juice Plus you, uh, distributors that are using Teamsy right now, they're, um, they're averaging 18 customers and 12 new distributors over 90 days. Okay, 
which is pretty awesome. So if you actually just use this consistently, as I'm gonna show you tonight, you could see results like that. I want you guys to know that people who use Teamsy, we call them sporadic users that are in Juice Plus. They're the ones that log on like once or twice a week maybe and kind of do it when they can. They're still doing pretty good. They're still doing four, they're still signing up four new distributors in three months. And when I shared that with Janet and Meredith at corporate, they were like, that would be pretty cool if, if if uh, network wide, we still did four over three months, we'd be kind of cool with that. So it's pretty neat. And of course, my favorite part of this whole love story is that we received the endorsement of Juice Plus for distributors to use Teamsy, which is an honor. It was an honor before I realized how rare it is that they endorse people. So we're really honored to be representing um, with the endorsement of corporate. Oh, and for those of you who aren't using Teamsy, see that link on the bottom? Take a screen grab or something or write it down quickly. Teamsy.com slash JP. That's where you're going to go to start a free trial of Teamsy. You can get 30 days free, full access. We don't ask for your credit card. We don't ask for anything strange. We just want you to use it and love it. Okay. All right. So let's get into this. What is relationship marketing? What is relationship marketing? A lot of people hear this term and they think that it means selling stuff to your friends. I was at a conference actually this week and there were some leaders in, in direct sales that a couple of people who own other companies and they use the term relationship marketing a lot too, but they, people use this term and they don't understand what it is. I want you guys to understand relationship marketing is a lead generation system. It's a lead generation system. That's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of the business. We're not just trying to sell stuff to our friends. We're actually, it's actually a system that will create interest in your business. Does this make sense? Okay. And I want you to understand as business owners, now forget the idea that you sell Juice Plus because you, are biz you do do that, but you're business owners. I want you to get into that mindset tonight. Your job is lead generation. Your business is lead generation. You're in the lead generation business. The business owner brings leads to the business. Make sense? Okay. So here's another principle on relationship marketing. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Look, people always say it's all about relationships, it's great. It's nice to use that, that language. I want you guys to understand your job as a business owner is to bring in leads so that you can build relationships with those people. People think building a business is about finding customers or finding recruits. It's about finding relationships. Whether or not those people buy from you or whether or not those people join your team, the relationship will add people to your business. Okay? Because with this system, we turn relationships into advocates. We turn relationships into advocates by investing time and providing outstanding service. Just let that sink in for a second. A friend of yours who has no interest in using Juice Plus, has no interest in joining your business, absolutely will bring other people to your business. True? Especially if you train them right and you serve them right and you help them, help them understand what your passion is and the focus of your business so that they know what kind of people you want to help. So I want you to start thinking about your relationships. All of your relationships are lucrative because they can become your advocates. And that's the job we do with relationship marketing. Okay. Next principle, relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust. In other words, if you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. <laughs> okay. If you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. There is so many things going on in our business that are kind of tricky and shady, honestly. And a lot of what people are teaching are still based on kind of the 1970s and 80s sales tactics. And I want you to know with this system, it depends on trust. So if you yearn to be completely and totally authentic and integrous with your business, you're in the right place. That's how we build a relationship marketing business. Now, what's cool is trust makes the work fun. Trust makes the work fun. You don't have to convince people when they trust you. You can get right to helping them. It also takes away the icky feeling from the sales process. How many of you like me are just terrified of becoming the icky salesperson? You don't have to worry about that when you build trust. And then, oh, hey, what happened? I lost one of my points. We're going back. We're going back. We got to get it. The last point here is you get to go for yes. You get to go for yes. How many of you have heard the term, you got to go through the no's to get to the yeses? 
And if you need want to be busy, you want to have a business, you just got to go through more no's. That is such an insane concept. Such an insane concept. Look, I've, I've been teaching for years that with relationship marketing, you get to go for yeses. I was at a conference this weekend um, with another trainer and a salesperson who's amazing. And she said, if you want to get if you want to get more yeses, you have to get more, you have to get more yeses, not more no's. The no's don't impact your yeses. Does this make sense? So I want you guys to know with relationship marketing, you get to go, you get to go for yeses. And how do you build trust? Trust makes the work fun, does all those cool things. How do you actually build it? There's four essential ingredients to building trust. I'm going to teach them to you tonight. So make sure you guys are taking notes. We'll go through them real quick. Number one is chemistry. Chemistry. Number two is character, character. Number three is competence, okay, competence. And number four is consistency. Chemistry, character, competence, consistency. The four essential ingredients to building trust. Okay, let me explain these a little for you. Chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Okay, chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Put simply, all things being equal, people would prefer to do business with a friend, right? And if you want to look at the other side of that coin, nobody wants to do business with someone they don't like. So what do you have in common with someone? And the easiest thing to do is just ask a couple questions and find out what you have in common. And some of you are really good at it. I know you'll send me friend requests and people will be like, oh my gosh, you're from New Hampshire. I grew up in Maine. Or, you know, they, it's so quick to find things that you have in common, but try to figure out what you have in common with people. And I probably shouldn't have to tell you this, but I do have to tell you this because I see it so much on Facebook and Instagram, things like that. Don't do things that divide your audience. Don't push people away. Look for ways that you can help people. What do you have in common? Okay, make sense? Number two is character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. I want you guys to understand that you don't have character. I'm sorry. Sorry, you don't have character. <laughs> what a jerk that Eric is. No, but seriously, character is an action. It's something you do. It's something you express daily. Okay? And when, you, when people question our character, we get offended, don't we? But the truth is, is they don't know what we did yesterday to demonstrate our character. They can only see what we're doing right now. This is so important. I want you guys to understand something. As business owners in a personality-based business, because your business is you, okay, your character, your business, you're, you're marketing your business 24-7. I was at Target today marketing my business. Everything you do is your, everything you do, demonstrating care for others showing people that you care, everything you post, the way you talk, the way you take care of your customers, it's all showing your character and you have to be mindful of it. Make sense? Yeah. Somebody cuts me off in traffic and they have a Juice Plus bumper sticker. What am I gonna think about Juice Plus, <laughs> right? Hey, by the way, this is just a little, a little funny thing I like to say, but if you're a person of faith, it's always nice to put something on your car that expresses your faith because then it forces you to be a better driver. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you don't want people to associate that. It's good. Hey, it's good. Keeps you honest. Okay. Character. Number three is competence. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Okay. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Again, it's something you need to be doing, not just having. I need to know first and foremost, do you know about your products and can you help me? How do they work? Oh my gosh. What are they, what are in these capsules? What, why should I take these? Do you understand, are you an expert on your product? I have a tower garden. It's, I'm kind of obsessed with my tower garden. I think I have a picture of it in my presentation, maybe. If I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll whip it up and show you. It's kind of going nuts. I live in San Diego. I think it's the, probably the ideal tower garden, right? It's, it's sunny 365 days a year. It's never hotter than 85 and it's never colder than 55, right? So I'm going nuts with my tower garden. But I'll be honest, like, that thing was really complicated in the beginning. Do you know how to help me with that? Why should I buy it from you? Right? I need to know. And the, the next piece of the puzzle is when I want to join your team because Juice Plus is rocking my world, 
Do I believe you are a competent leader? Do I believe you can lead me in this business and help me be successful? I need to know that you're competent in these two things for me to trust you as the business owner. Now, here's the good news. For those of you who don't have this, maybe you're newer, you know, your job is to get this competence, is to learn and absorb and become a sponge, get mentoring on the business, get everything you need so that you can be competent in these areas. But here's what I want you guys to do if you're new. Do not fake it. Do not fake it because you don't need to. You just need to lean in to the competence of your upline and you need to sell that competence to the people you're talking to. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Jackie's amazing. I can't believe how knowledgeable this woman is. This is so great. I just learned this from her. You, you basically just tell the story about how incredibly competent your upline is until you get your own competence. You borrow theirs. Okay. So leaders, make sure you're telling your, your team members, you know, you're new and you need to learn, but until then you just lean into my competence and I will kind of be the wing that covers you. Make sense. Okay. Chemistry, character, competence. One point on this before I move on to number four, when someone's going to do business with you, they really only care about these three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Are you, do you care about me? And are you good at what you do? These are heartfelt questions. They're, never, they're rarely asked or expressed. Something people feel. They may not even understand it. But I want you to know that when you get objections in your business, objections come from these three questions. Objections come from these three questions. And yes, you can overcome objections and you should learn to do that to help people get out of their own way so you can get to helping them. But you, as you build a relationship, as you invest in relationships, as I'm teaching you tonight, these questions will go away. Then there's no more objections. How many of you have had somebody say, whatever it is you're doing, I want some. If you're doing it, I'm in. Have you had anybody say that? That's because you've built the trust with that person. Make sense? And over time, that's what you're going to do with all your customers, all your prospects. You're going to build that trust. Okay. Number four is consistency. The fourth ingredient to building trust is consistency. This is probably the most important. Would you guys agree? Is it important for me to be, trust you to see you being consistent? How many of you have kids? <laughs> right? You think it's important to be consistent? Oh, absolutely. Anything that you did well with your kids. Hey, I just want you guys to know this. This is a little business tip. Anything you did great as a parent, you're going to be great at in business. And where you struggled at a parent, as a parent, you'll probably struggle in business. So at least now you know already what you need to shore up. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay, but consistency. Let's talk about this. My wife always says it like this. Don't tell me, show me. Right? Don't tell me, show me. Let me see how you're doing. Here's a principle on this. People respect consistency and they desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and they desire it for themselves. We all know that we need to be consistent if we want people to trust us. But the kind of a cool side effect is that when people see you being consistent, it draws them to you. It's how you actually attract customers and team members. There's people, you know, it, you, when you join the business, it's like, everybody, guess what I just did? I just bought a virtual franchise for Juice Plus. Yes, it's going to be so great. They're like, okay, good for you. It makes a big difference when they see you being consistent several months for several months in a row, does, doesn't it? And see you making milestones and things like that. People respect it. They desire it. They want to be around it. How many of you have been told by somebody that you inspire them? Yeah, is that, is that the most humbling thing ever? But what about it? What about you do you think is inspiring them? Most likely it's your consistency. They see your healthy lifestyle. They see how you're sharing. They see how you're lifting other people up. They want to be around it. It's kind of cool. By the way, this principle is lifted from one of my favorite books. Um, it wouldn't be right for me not to mention it and to recommend it since I took this principle out of it. It's called Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. Has anyone ever read this book by Robert Cialdini? This is what it looks like. It's a classic. This is a classic, great book. But here's good news. This book was just put on Audible this month. So if those of you who like audiobooks, you can get it on Audible. Influence the Psychology Persuasion. Okay, so let's talk about this. How many of you are pretty consistent? Let me see your faces real quick on this. How many of you are pretty consistent about, um, you know, taking Juice Plus, living your healthy lifestyle? Let me see your hands if, if you're living that out loud and that's you. Okay, great. Cool. How many of you are pretty good about sharing what you're doing with others? 
posting it on social media, sharing. People actually know that you're, you're in the Juice Plus business and you're, you're, you're open for business to help people. How many people are good at consistent at that? Not quite as confident. Okay, so we got something to work on there, but still pretty, pretty, good, pretty good group. Okay, the real question is this, and this is why you're here talking to me today. How many of you are as consistent staying in touch with people, staying in regular contact with people? Debra, no, Debra, you've been in uh, 24 weeks of boot camp. Of course you are. <laughs> she's got, she's going, I, I do that. She's been with me. We've been working together to get her consistent. She's doing great. This is the real checkup from the neck up. One of my favorite um, mentors uh, who's really helped me in my life. I got to meet a few times, which is amazing was Zig Ziglar. Have you guys ever seen or read any of Zig Ziglar's books? Anybody? He always says the checkup from the neck up. Here's your checkup from the neck up. It's about connecting with people, isn't it? And, and in our business, there's such a temptation, not just our business, any business really, there's such a temptation for automated marketing, you know, things that are automatically going to do things for you. But our business is built person to person and it's all about connecting with people, okay? It's all about staying in touch with people. Relationship building is a contact sport, which means you've got to be in contact with people, okay? If you hired me to be your coach in this business, what I would tell you is it's simple. You just need to make a list of every single human being you know, and you need to stay in regular contact with all of them. <laughs> right? Jackie's laughing at that one. Hopefully it's me. Maybe there's something else in the room that's funny. Here's the thing though. I know your time is scarce. That's why I built Teamsy to make it doable and easy for you. Okay? But here's the principle that I want you to understand, and we'll jump into Teamsy. Well, I just need to share this principle with you. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I see, Jackie, I see you're about to take a picture of that. Let me put it back for you. <laughs> Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Okay. Just real quick, just give you a quick example on this. Um, make sure you, if, you're, if you can turn your cameras on, turn them on so I can see your face just for a couple of minutes. So how many of you have ever received a great card or letter from somebody that you really care about? You know, and inside was a handwritten message and one that really touched your heart emotionally. How many of you ever received a great card like that? Cool. Just about everybody. And if you haven't, if you've never received one of those, please, by all means, put your address in the chat. We're, we're going to write you one. So everyone should have one of those. Okay, so um, how many of you are the, are the, neat, the neat freaks? You, want to, you like to keep things neat, don't like clutter lying around your house? A few of you, however many like me that wish you, would, you were like that, but you're not. Okay, so when you get the card with that beautiful card, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. How many of you are able to just go, that was nice, and then throw it in the trash can? Let me see hands of people who throw away those beautiful cards because you don't want them laying around. Nobody, nobody's raising their hand. Okay, how many of you save them? And you have like a special place, probably with too many that you've saved, somewhere stashed away, like a pile of these things you can't get rid of. Yeah, we have a hard time parting with these. Isn't it amazing how much we value them? Now, a couple of cool things about this. If you go to that pile or that stash tonight and pull one out randomly out of the pile and read it, I bet you it'll impact you even deeper than it did the first time you read it. It's like, it's like the effect compounds over time. In fact, when we pass away, what's often most treasured by our family are those cards and letters that we've kept. Isn't that amazing? How many of you own a card or a letter from a loved one who's passed that you treasure? It's powerful, isn't it? Now, here's another example. I recently received this from my um, life insurance salesperson. It's a happy birthday postcard. Have you guys ever got one of these? From like an insurance person, maybe the dentist sometimes sends these. Does, do these go in, this is nice, right? Is it nice to get a little happy birthday message from somebody? Okay. Does this go in the special place? <laughs> Everyone's like, no way. Does this even make it into the house sometimes? It's like, oh, that was nice. And, and it's gone, right? We toss it. Why does this nice little birthday message have no value? I know you guys are like, Eric, just get to the point. We, we understand already. Here's the thing, guys. This, is, this violates the two pieces of that principle. One, this required no investment of time. Time is the most valuable thing we have. This required none, so it has no value added to it. The second piece is, this is not personal. 
This is not connecting with me. This is bulk. It's bulk, required no time, has no value. It goes right in the trash can. And when you look at how you approach your marketing and your connections and your relationship buildings, it, buildings, <laughs> your relationship building in your business, you need to think about that. Am I connecting personally with this person? And am I showing an investment of time in just them? Now, do I think you need to be writing people letters and cards all day long? No, you don't need to be doing that. Though You should do that whenever you can find a reason to. In Teams, yeah, I even have some scripts and things you can write in a personal handwritten note to people, by the way, for those of you who don't know how to start that. But even just connecting with somebody on Facebook Messenger or via text message or you know, other social outlets where you just connect one-on-one -on -one with somebody just for a second, it's still an investment of time in just them and it's personal and it makes a connection and it's just enough to make somebody's day. And that's what I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do in Teamsy is we're gonna systematically make people's day every day. And that's gonna generate momentum in the relationships. It's gonna uncover interest where we can find the right people to join our business and to buy our products without alienating all our cousins and friends and everybody who might not be interested right now. Make sense? Okay, let's dive in to Teamsy. I think I have one more slide. You guys get the idea though. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Okay, so this is all great. You know, it, it all feels good, right? But you need a system. And this is where, uh, this is where we all kind of flail is when we don't have a system. You need a way to stay in contact with all your relationships. That's not overwhelming. Know when you're going to contact them. Gonna... And know when you're not going to contact them. In other words, I, this, just tell me what to do. Don't make me think, right? I don't want you spending all day planning. And then know what you're going to say so you can make their day and start a conversation without staring at the screen all day and stuck in analysis paralysis, trying to figure out what to say. How many of you guys struggle sometimes with what to say? Yeah, so you need a system that helps you with that. And then make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. In our business, about 80% of the people that are good leads fall through the cracks. I'm going to show you tonight how to make that watertight in your business. Okay, so let me jump out of here real quick. Where, where am I? Where's Teamsy? Got it here somewhere. Okay, here's the Teamsy dashboard. Okay, here it is. Again, if you missed the first couple minutes of the call and you haven't started using Teamsy, go to teamsy.com slash JP to start your free trial. It's free for 30 days. You can get in here, create some momentum for free and love it, okay? And then after the 30 days, because Juice Plus has negotiated a special deal for everybody in Juice Plus, it's a third less for you than anyone else. It's less than 60 cents a day to have Teamsy. It's crazy cheap. Okay. <clears throat> So let's show, here's the dashboard. Now what we're gonna do, oh, you know what I wanna do is actually show you how to set this up, I'm sorry. I'm ahead of myself. So when you first log into Teamsy the very first time, it'll take you into the setup wizard. The setup wizard just shows you how to set this up and it makes it easy, okay? I am not good, I shouldn't say I'm not good at it. I can do just about anything with technology. I just don't want to. How many of you just don't wanna deal with complicated stuff? I don't wanna deal with it. So we made Teamsy easy, so, so it's easy to do. So this leads you through, there's a little video for me kind of telling you some of the stuff you'll get in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set an income goal, set an income goal, first thing we're gonna do. How much money would you like to be making a year from now? Okay, just put the number in there. So you can see my number's 150,000. Let's say you wanted it to go higher, you just slide that little slider. And as I move this, you notice the amount of activity I need to do each day goes up. Teamsy will tell you exactly what to do to get to your goal in a year. So I'm going to put it back to where I was. Where was I? 150. 150 is a very doable one hour a day goal, by the way, just so you know. So I think you should all set at least six figures as your goal. I don't know where you are in your business, but for those of you who are thinking it would be less than six figures, make your goal, please, at least six figures. And then if you do this consistently, you're going to get there. Make sense? That's the important piece. So look, at 150,000 a year, this is what I need to do each day. By the way, this is five days a week when I say each day. Connect with nine prospects, six customers, and four distributors on my team every day, okay? And let's say you don't have distributors, you just take that four and add it to the nine, okay? Just do more prospects. Make sense? Same thing if you've got no customers, then you would just be doing only prospects for now. All right, so let's hit continue. 
Last thing we're going to do is get all of your contacts in Teamsy. You get your, you get your back office people in, your Facebook friends into Teamsy, your phone contacts into Teamsy. Everywhere you've got contacts now, put them in Teamsy so you can be organized. Have them in one place. No more pads of paper you can't find or little sticky notes or <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It'll all be in one place. Teamsy lives in the cloud, which means as long as you've got your phone near you, you've got Teamsy. You meet somebody new, you don't have to write it down on a napkin. You pull out your phone and you put it right in Teamsy. It's there. Does this make sense? How many of you have your phone nearby right now? Let me see your hands. Yeah, there's a couple of you who went, oh crap, where's my phone? <laughs> I'm going to see your camera turn off because you're going to go make sure you have it nearby. Okay, so once you get everybody uploaded into Teamsy, these, these little buttons here are just tutorials to show you how to do it. They're super easy. There's videos and there's step-by-step -step instructions, okay? Those are the three most popular ones. Um, and if you want like every single tutorial under the sun, you go to the Help Center in Teamsy. It's right here, Help Center. It's got just like every FAQ and video you could ever want for import. Everything's there, okay? Um, by the way, if you don't like to do Help Center and you just want somebody to help, you just click this Help button that's everywhere and ask for help, okay? My team will help you. They're there all the time. We will even do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom, one person to help you, and they'll hold your hand and walk you through the whole thing if you need it, okay? So just so you guys know, it's there for you. Okay, um, so here's my Teamsy dashboard. We're gonna do one more thing for setup before we jump in here. Let me just do that really quick. See on the left side where it says team? I'm gonna jump over there. The team page is your full CRM in Teamsy. That means customer relationship manager, right? Or contact relationship manager. It's a fancy word for an electronic Rolodex that organizes all your contacts. It keeps records of everything. Make sense? We call it the team page because in relationship marketing, everyone's your team. Your distributors, your customers are part of your team. And your advocates, everyone else you know, all your prospects are part of your team because everybody brings business to you. Make sense? Okay. So what we're gonna do on this page is we're gonna rank our contacts. You notice how everybody has a number next to their name? Well, when you, when you zoom in, you can see that's their star rating. That's their star rating. So Jana is a three star. So let me just turn this on rank mode. Rank mode lets us jam down our whole list and rank everybody. So what we wanna do is we wanna give everybody a rank. Five stars to one star. You guys know how star systems work? Of course you do. We use it for everything. This is a super important step because in relationship marketing, you need to spend more time with your best people. You need to talk to them first and you need to talk to them more often, okay? And once you've put the star ranks on Teamsy, you don't have to think or plan ever, ever again, ever guys. You just turn on Teams. It automatically gives you who to connect with today. It cycles through the list naturally. You don't ever have to worry about somebody falling through the cracks. It's all done for you automatically. Okay? And it, can't, it cannot screw up because it's a computer. <laughs> right? Like we can. So here's what happens. When you first put all your people in, they're all going to be three stars by default. Really what I want you to do, see you don't have to rank everybody on your list. I just want you to look, go through and cherry pick the people you like and put them in as fours and fives, okay? So they come up first. And then you can continually rank as you go, but just to get started, that's what I want you to do. Now let me explain to you what these ranks mean. I'll give you my definitions. A five star is somebody most likely to become a customer or a distributor, or they're already an existing customer or distributor that's a total rock star, all right? They come up on your list every 30 days. These are your best friends, your closest family members. They're gonna come up for you just to connect with every 30 days. Now, when they come up, it's not to try to send them a cold invite message or any of that kind of stuff. It's just to say hello and to make their day. I'll show you how we do that in a little bit, okay? Just to keep connecting. A four star is somebody likely to become a customer or a distributor with a little bit of nurturing. This is just in your opinion, by the way. Four-star people are also your friends and family, the people that trust you already somewhat. You're warm. These are your warm people. They're four stars, okay? Three stars could go either way. You have no idea how they're going to go. Um, the vast majority of the people on your list will be three stars, okay? And that's normal. They show up on your list every 90 days. See, the good thing about this is you don't have to re-rank them. They're already threes. Make sense? They're gonna show up every 90 days. Two stars are getting a bit colder. They show up every 120 days. So as you're going through doing your list every day, your five stars are gonna come up first. You connect with all them, then your four stars will be there, right? And as you're connecting with them, then your three stars will come up. 
And as you're connecting with them, boom, it's been 30 days. Your five stars are back on the list again. Then you work through your five stars. Now, this makes sense and it cycles. So you're talking to everybody several times a year, some people more often because they're your best leads. Make sense? A lot of people skip this. They're like, oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming. And then they go, well, I just connected with 100 people and I didn't sign anybody up. Well, you connected with, the, you might have connected with the coldest people in your database, the people who don't trust you yet. Make sense? All right, let me just, uh, let me just hit the dead horse one more time on this. Just to give you an analogy. So I'm in Southern California, right here outside my window. You can't see it, but I can see it. There's a little grove of citrus trees, okay? I've got a little grove of citrus trees. And some of them are full of fruit and some of them aren't. Okay, this is like your relationships. The people who trust you already, it's, they're like trees that are bearing fruit already. The people who barely know who you are, they're like a, a, a tree that is a seedling, you know, it's maybe three or four years old, no fruit, but it's a nice healthy tree. And it has potential, right? So if I'm gonna go out to my grove to get some fruit, which tree will I go to for the fruit first? I'm gonna go to the one that already has fruit on the branches, right? And so in your business, you want to go to the ones that already have trust for you first. Make sense? And so when you rank them, they show up first. And you're going to go to that tree more often because it's going to continually make fruit for me, whereas the other one, I have to continue watering it and fertilizing it and waiting. So Teamsy, you're going to every day connect with people. You know, you're going to go to those, those people that trust you first. And then after you've gone to them, you'll continue watering and fertilizing the other relationships and moving them along. Does this make sense? Okay. So now we're ready to do our power hour. Let's do it. I'm back on the dashboard. Let me just show you how this, how this dashboard looks. First off, you've got your today's activities right here. These are the goals that we set and set up. Our goals were to connect with nine prospects today, six customers, four distributors, right? And that was based on my income goal. Um, and when I say connect, again, I just mean connect. And I'll show you how we do it. It's just to make their day, get them to smile, and maybe start a conversation with us. Invites, this goal right here, invites, this is something a little different. An invite is when I found through a conversation with somebody that they're, they've got some interest in what I'm doing, I'm going to invite them to something. Maybe I'm going to invite them to a salad in a jar party. Maybe I'm going to invite them to a, a special event or a Facebook group that I'm hosting. Maybe I'm going to straight up just say, let's talk about these products. You need to get these. I'm going to invite them to buy some. An invite is related to the business. It's related to making a sale or a recruit. And we do it when we find interest. So my goal here out of 19 people today connecting with is to invite three. Okay, I'm going to invite three. This helps me focus on the people who are really qualified and are interested so that I can close, I can close them and get to helping them. Now this last goal here adds, this is just adding new people to your business, uh, adding new people to your teams each day. Okay, whether you meet them online, in person, whatever, just putting, getting in the habit of adding new people to Teamsy. Okay. Okay. You can see I've got one ad in there today, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I wonder who it was, Jackie, <laughs> who got added my teensy today. Pretty cool. All right. So the power hour right here in the center, this is where we work. This is designed to help you be super mega efficient. You guys, those of you who haven't seen teensy, you're, you're like going to love this in a second. Let me show you this works. The power hour has two halves. The left side are my lists. I've got four lists, prospects, customers, distributors, and my follow-ups list. Okay. Each one of these lists gives me five names at a time on purpose. That's so I stay focused. I can't skip too much, right? I won't get overwhelmed. Okay. And then on the right-hand side is where I log that activity as I go. So I don't have to come back later and do homework. All right. So let's do a power hour. The first person on my list is Jackie. I'm going to connect with Jackie. Um, I'm going to use Facebook to connect. That's my favorite messaging app because it gets such a great response rate. So I've got Facebook open right here in a separate tab, ready to go. But this is where I used to get stuck. Oh my gosh, what am I going to say to Jackie? How many of you, that's where you get stuck. And then you spend 15 minutes trying to think of the message when you should be done in 15 minutes. So that's why I built this scripts library. About two years after we released Teams, I was like, people really are struggling with the hello part of this game. So we put the scripts in. So see right here where it says scripts. You can click on that and just grab one of my icebreakers to start this conversation, okay? I'll grab number one, connect number one, just the first example. Here's how it reads if you can't see it on your screen. It says, hi, Jane, just stopping by to say hello. How are you? I hope your day is awesome, okay? Simple. I'm gonna copy that script. Now, what I'll do is 
I'm going to actually paste it in Teamsy so I can edit it here. I have sent the wrong name to people before, which is fine. Let's see. Uh, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Just stopped by to say hello. How are you? Great. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else do I need to do? I need to put some emoticons in here. I like emoticons. What can I say? I think emoticons make it fun. Just me. Okay. So now I've got it just the way I like it. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy that and send it to her. Now to send, for example, on Facebook, you have to actually send in Facebook. So I copied that. I'll just paste it over in Facebook and send it. There she is. Okay. So look at how easy this is. There it is. There's the message. Send. It's gone. Now, what I recommend you do is do it as quick as I just did because you start second guessing and overthinking. Just send it. Once it's gone, now you just move on. So look, I'm going to log this in Teamsy as I go. So see this big blue button that says log connect? That's how you log the connect. Click it. It says connect logged. And look at this, Jackie's gone off my list. My list has slid up one slice, one, what do you call that, space. Now look up here on my dashboard, one done, eight left. The next person on my list is Jay. Uh, I'm just gonna use that same script, it's still on my clipboard, just paste it in there and change the name. Look at that. Hi Jay, just stop by to say hello, how are you? Hope your day's awesome. And I'll do the same thing, I'll do a quick copy. And then I'll send that message to Jay. Now what's pretty cool, and I'm not doing it here, but you could actually save these Facebook links of these people. So I can send that. You could actually grab her Facebook link and paste it in Teams. So next time you could just click it and it would jump. Um, but I find that typing their name in, like it takes me like two seconds. It doesn't bother me at all. So I just do that. Okay, look, there it is, log. Two done, seven left. I'm gonna go to tomorrow now. Okay, same thing. Okay, I'll send it to tomorrow. How many of you saw Tamara speak at, at, um, at the event in Sacramento? Did you guys see her speak? Dr. Tamara, oh my gosh, wasn't she amazing? You guys, people are going, oh, now I know who he's talking about. I'm not gonna actually send it to her right now because she's sleeping in Australia, but you get the idea. I'm gonna I would toggle over, send her the message, log it, and move on to the next one. Yes, you can use that same script nine times. That is no big deal. People are like, oh my gosh, well, people are going to go, Eric said the same thing to me. No, they're not. You said hello to people. That's it. They're not going to compare. When they respond, then have a, real, have a conversation, each one being organic. Make sense? That little script that I showed you, it does so many things though. It it's, makes it casual and non-threatening. says hello. You're wishing them a great day. People are excited by those. Uh, Deborah, would you say, have you used that script? Would you, were you surprised at the response rate? Yeah. So... Uh, Typically, you're going to get a response rate um, in general of at least 50% with that script. Maybe even much higher with the people who know you better and like you. Okay. So that's pretty awesome. And um, so we're going to keep going down our list until we get our nine done. Okay. Just sending a message out right now. Don't worry about having the conversation. We're just sending the message out until we hit nine. So if people do respond immediately, I don't want you to run off and have that conversation right now. You'll get distracted. Stay focused on getting your messages out. Also, I don't want you to worry about the people who don't respond. People who don't respond, don't think about them for a half a second. They're gonna come back automatically in Teams. You don't need to think about them, okay? You'll be busy talking to the people who do respond. You'll be very busy. <laughs> okay, so when I'm done with my prospects for the day, nine in a row, boom, I'm gonna jam over to customers. Oh, one more tip I would say is if a name comes up that you're like, ooh, I don't know, I feel weird just messaging that person. Just send the message anyways, trust me, just do it. Just do it. What's gonna happen when you get in the make someone's day mindset? It's going to blow your mind how people respond and how you serendipitously are present when they need somebody. I mean, you think you're just calling to, you know, you're, you're gonna hopefully talk about Juice Plus, but you'll be amazed. How many people need a friend today? They need someone to pray with them. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you connected with me today. What an amazing coincidence, you know, uh, whatever. It's gonna happen constantly. Because you have this computer system systematically keeping you in touch with people, you're gonna be present in people's lives and you'll be amazed at how often it's when they need you. Does this make sense? And that's what we want. We want you to be the center of the relationships. We want you to be the trusted advisor, the person that people lean on because that will bring them not only to your business, but it will help them bring people to you. Okay, next list is customers. 
How many of you wish you were better at staying in touch with your customers? Now you have the system. So I'm going to go to my customers list and I'm going to start connecting with my customers. The first one's Brandy. Great. I just need to just stay in touch with her. That's it. I don't have to overcomplicate this. You can go grab one of my scripts if you want. I'm going to grab one. Boom. Here's a simple one. Hi, John. How are you enjoying the products? Send me an update. Let me know. It could be of help. Okay, great. I'm going to use that one. So what I'll do is I'll just paste it in there. I'll change the name. By the way, you can put your own scripts in Teamsy. You can just save them in there and have them at your fingertips. Same way. Okay. How are you enjoying your tower? Garden. TM. No, just kidding. <laughs> How many of you put those in your messages? Really good ones. Really, you, you really good ones do that. Okay. So you get the idea. I'm going to copy that. Go send her that message. How are you enjoying your tower garden? Send me an update. Let me know how it could be of help. Okay. Send me an update, by the way, is one of my favorite little phrases for, for starting a conversation with someone. When you feel like your conversation is just like fizzling out, like when you're like, they're like, thanks for reaching out. We're good. Bye. Well, what are you up to? Send me an update. What have you been up to this summer? Send me an update. How are your products? Send me an update. Those little words, because people go, oh, now I know exactly what to do. I can send them an update. And it's amazing. And then when they send you the update, you have lots of stuff to talk about. Make sense? So if you take nothing else tonight, take that and use it so that you can help more people. So I'm going to go down my list of customers the same way. The next person's Emlyn. I can use that same script, maybe grab a different script. The most important part is just staying in contact with your customers. I know, I know a lot of you um, have been taught, maybe you teach your teams this, you know, that you want to schedule a specific follow-up every 30 days, that it needs to be at this day of the week before their auto ship ships and all of that. Here's the problem. It's really hard to duplicate that. It's even hard to just do it, isn't it? So if you want to stay in touch with somebody every 30 days, their first four months when they're, you know, when they start taking Juice Plus, great. Just put them as a five-star person in Teamsy. They're going to come up every 30 days. Don't overthink it. Does this make sense? But just by staying in touch with people and being present, it creates a lot of really beneficial things in your business. First off, it's good service, right? But I want you to understand that when you're in regular contact with customers, statistically, this is a fact. They order more products and they retain longer. They order more products and they retain longer. All you have to do is just stay in contact. Okay? They're curious about more stuff. And let's be honest. The, the, the website is not really made for them to go shopping on their own. They need your help, <laughs> right? They need your help. So maybe they're curious about something. I know this has happened with me where I've gone to the website, tried to buy something myself, and then I just end up messaging my Juice Plus rep and say, can you just help me with this? How do I, how do I order this? Can you order it for me? <laughs> you know. So you just need to be in contact, regular contact. Now, the other thing that happens, which is great, how many of you can think of at least one customer that you love and you want more people like that. Can you guys think of somebody like that? Yeah. Where do you go find those people? Do you guys know where to go look for people like that? Okay, I'm going to tell you the secret. Are you ready? Here's the secret. If you want, to know, if you want great customers, you get them from your customers. The best place to find a new customer is from your current customer. Some of you are nodding. You're like, ah, duh, I knew that. How do you get those people? How do you find those? How do you get introduced to those people? Step one, stay in contact with your customers, okay? When it's normal and natural for you to be reaching out to your customers and you have a great relationship with them, it's just as easy to ask them. It's just as easy to ask them to say, Jerry, I know you've been getting great results with Juice Plus and I'm sure you're, you've told your friends about it because what, what do people do when they get great results with something? They tell people about it, don't they? Is there anybody in particular, Jerry, that you've talked to that needs more information on Juice Plus? Because I would love to help them. He's going to go, yeah, of course. Yeah, I talked to so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. Great. Would you mind introducing me to them so I can get them some more information? Okay. Would you mind introducing me to them? Ask, always ask your customers to introduce you to the people they're talking to. Never ask someone to refer you. How many of you got in trouble at school and they gave you a referral to the principal? <laughs> or had a friend. Never ask somebody to refer you. They're not going to do that. Ask them to introduce you. By the way, without getting too deep into this, because I know in boot camp we spent a whole week on this. But um, 
when they introduce you to a couple people who are interested, guess what you just uncovered? A new distributor. If somebody easily gives you three people who are interested, don't you think they'd make a great distributor? Yeah. That's where I would just go, oh, Jerry, thank you for introducing me to your three friends. Looks like all of them are interested. I really appreciate you supporting my business like that. Have you ever thought of being a distributor? Because before I put these order through, I could put them through as yours. Okay, and that might be just enough to pay for your, your product. What do you think? He's gonna go, wow, well, maybe, I guess I never thought about it. My point guys is stay in touch with your customers, darn it, that's all. Teamsy makes it easy. You stay in touch, they order more products, they retain longer, they refer people, they don't refer people, they introduce you to their friends, and often they reveal themselves to be a sleeper agent who wants to be a distributor in your business, okay? All because you're just in touch with your customers on a regular basis, that's it. It's really cool. By the way, if you have not been in touch with your customers, when you reach out and say, hey, I, you, you crossed my Facebook feed and I thought I'd say, hi, how are you? They're gonna be like, oh my gosh, great to hear from you. I very sincerely doubt anyone will go, where have you been for the last six months? <laughs> They're just gonna be excited to hear from you. Does this make sense? Okay, uh, one more thing on customers. If somebody canceled, how many of you guys have customers who have canceled? They're still your customer. Treat them as if they were current. They're still your customer. Treat them as if they were current. They'll come back. A lot of them will come back. You go on vacation, you forget your juice plus, you come back, you've got an extra month's worth. You cancel. It's nothing, not because you don't like them. Make sense? Distributors, next list, distributors. I'm gonna go down my distributor list the same way, connect with people on my team. Just say hello, just connect, build the relationship with them, okay? Most of the people in our business are relationship driven, not money driven. They want to be feel the connection to you. Having a, having a page, having a Zoom call, that's great, but they really wanna feel that personal connection to you. So Teamsy makes it easy, just stay in touch. As your team gets huge, you have a system, you can stay in touch. You don't have to talk to everybody in your downline, but you can keep in touch with all of your frontline people. You can keep in touch with emerging leaders in your downline and really build genuine relationships with them. I have to tell you how many, think about, guys, just think about for a second. Somebody upline in this organization who you really look up to, everyone think about that person for a second. How much would it mean to you to just randomly get a text on a Wednesday that says, I was thinking about you today. I wanna let you know I'm proud of you for whatever you did and, and I'm here if you need anything. Would that be meaningful? You know it would be. So you get to model that with your team. Make sense? Okay, so prospects, customers, distributors. You're gonna do your power hour. And my example, based on a $150,000 year goal, was to connect with 19 people. Once you, get, once you get used to using Teamsy, you should be able to do that in 15 minutes. Okay? But let's say it takes you 30 minutes. You're still only halfway through your power hour. Power hour. You're jamming through these, sending these messages out. Now, what will happen is you will, the, the fourth list, the second half of your power hour is to work your follow-ups, okay? You work your follow-ups. Now, you notice I don't have any follow-ups scheduled. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. You actually put people on the follow-ups list when they've shown interest and you've invited them to something specific. The follow-ups list are the people you're actually working with to get into the business, to get into the products. Make sense? And your other lists, you're just having conversations, you're building relationships, you're just being friendly, you're connecting with people. Okay, so how do, we, how do we connect the dots? Well, when you do your connects, you're, you know, people will respond. And when they respond, you now have an opportunity to have a conversation with them. Okay, oh, great to hear from you, Eric. And then you say, well, what have you been up to? Send me an update. <laughs> you guys got that, that was a little advanced one. Have a conversation with them. See how, much, see how much conversation you can have. Ask some questions. Learn about them. The goal of this conversation, guys, is to help them. That's it. The goal of the conversation is to find a way to help them. Find a way to help them. What do they need? And they'll tell you in the conversation. People will make jokes they'll comp or they'll straight out complain or they'll tell you a desire just in regular conversation. Um, you know, I know some of you guys have had a lot of rain lately. Maybe somebody has a leaky roof. And they're like, man, I'm running around trying to put pots under all these leaks. I need to get my roof redone. How many of you, how many of you know a roofer? Anybody know a roofer? 
So give the roofers contact information to them. Help them however you can. Does this make sense? It doesn't have to be Juice Plus related. There are times, I reached out to some people today. I found two people responded that they're dealing with serious illness. Now, obviously, uh, Juice Plus can help with that, right? But you're not going to go, oh, oh, you got, oh, you've been diagnosed with cancer. Let me send you information on Juice Plus. <laughs> right? It's probably not the best thing. But you know what? Maybe they need someone to pray with them right then because they're, they're terrified. And you happen to be there today when they were feeling alone. Find a way to help them. Okay, find a way to help them invest in the relationship. Now, as you're having the conversation, you're getting, they're catching you up and you're finding ways to invest and add, add value to them, which is easy to do, right? You, as a natural part of the conversation, law of reciprocity, you'll get to tell them what you're up to, right? Just having a conversation. What are you up to, Eric? Oh my gosh. You know, I left my job four years ago and I work for myself now. You do? What are you doing? I help people get healthy. So I lost a bunch of weight, found, got myself healthy. This company helped me and I was just like, this is amazing. I've now found that I'm really good at helping other people do the same. And it's been able to, I've been able to support my family. Just tell them what you're doing, okay? Don't be afraid of it. Not because I'm trying to shove something down your throat because this is what I'm doing. And just write these little words down as your guide, what I'm doing and why I'm passionate about it. What I'm doing and why I'm passionate about it. And all those people that you've seen train you that tell you, don't tell them it's juice plus. Oh my gosh, hide it, hide it, hide it until they're really interested. That's a bunch of baloney guys. That's a bunch of baloney. Don't do that. Tell them because I'm so passionate about health. I've aligned myself with juice plus. It's really a revolutionary product and company. It's been amazing. Let them know. Okay. What do you do and why you're passionate about it? As I'm talking about what I'm doing and why I'm passionate about it, most people will respond like, wow, that's great. Good on you. Good for you, Eric. Good for you. I'm glad you found something like that, right? A lot of them may be skeptical about the fact that you might be pitching them soon. So they're waiting for it. That's normal because they've been approached roughly by so many other people. But you know, as I'm talking about them, about what I'm doing and they're encouraging me, I would just ask them something like, Deborah, would you like any more, you know, are you interested in learning more about what I'm doing? Deborah, would you, you're, Deborah, you're my guinea pig because you're right in front of my face. Would you like to learn more about what I'm doing? Do you have any, you know, would you like to learn more about these products? You know, you can just ask them. Are you interested in more information? She can say yes or no, right? If she says yes, perfect. I'm going to ask more questions, find out exactly what she's interested in so I can give her that exact piece, right? And invite her to something. If she says, not really, I'm really excited for you, Eric, uh, what you're doing. It's very admirable, admirable. However, I'm not that interested in myself right now. Okay, no big deal. Hey, you know what, Deborah? It was great chatting with you today. I really enjoyed catching up. She's going to say, me too. And then I will just plant the seed and say, could you do me a favor though? If you do come across somebody who would like to learn more about some of these things or this business or, or who need help with what I do, could you connect us? Would you introduce us? so I could get them some information. I'm on a mission to help as many people as I can. She's gonna say, okay, I'll do that. See, with relationship marketing, you build the relationship, you build the trust. It's like, hey, I'm not gonna jam my business down your throat, but I am in business and I do wanna help people. Could you keep, if you're not interested, could you at least keep an ear out and introduce me to people you come across that I could help? She'll say yes. We're gonna train her to become an advocate. She may not be ready to be a customer right now. We have to build more trust, but we're gonna plant that seed. And when she says, yes, yeah, sure. I'd like some more information. Wow. That sounds amazing. You haven't, you haven't worn those of you guys who are on the call early. You haven't worn real shoes and socks in four years <laughs> and haven't had to. That's okay. Yeah. I want to do that. I want to be with my kids 24 seven. Great. Let's get together so I can get you some information. Okay. So then what I'm going to do when she's interested, I'm going to invite her to something in Teamsy. I'm going to log it and I'm going to set my follow-ups. Let me show you how to do it. Let me show you how to do it. And then we'll do a Q&A. By the way, a little pro tip. You're going to do your power hour. It's going to be sending out these connects and sending out your follow-ups. Set aside some time in the day to have like the back and forth conversation. Okay. Just to have the back and forth. So you're not on your phone all day long. What I used to do when I worked full time is I would do 30 minutes of my one hour lunch break would be answering messages. So I did my power hour in the morning before I went to work. And then at 1230 to one, 
I responded to messages. Responded to and then in the evening, like between eight and nine, I responded to messages. So I just had a couple times a day set aside so I could have all these conversations. Make sense? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look her up. Are you in here? Oh my gosh, I got to first I got to add her to Teensy. She's my guinea pig. I guess I should use Jackie since I, since I logged a thing with Jackie. So Jackie's going to be my guinea pig. So I'm going to look up Jackie. There she is. We sent her that message, that connect message. I'm looking her up because she's not on my dashboard anymore, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the connect box right here. By the way, on the team page, when I go to her full record, this keeps all of her contact information, notes, the record of all of our conversations. It's all here. I can t add tags to her, all that kind of stuff. Okay, it's all here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is in this connect box, see where it says invite right here on the bottom left? I'm going to click on that. And I'm gonna move it off the default, which is just to connect, and I'm gonna invite her to something. So let's say we're gonna have um, an event. Let's do a business, uh, like a Facebook event. I'm gonna invite her to, let's say a Facebook event. Great, my team's doing a live Facebook event tonight. Are you around, Jackie? She says, yes, okay, great. I'm gonna send you the link, just perfect. So I'm just gonna log on here that this uh, note, this was a live FB event, okay? And I'm gonna send her that via Facebook. So, so notice right now, when I set that invite to business opportunity meeting, it created a follow-up. See this little yellow icon? It created a follow-up in two days, okay? You can set a follow-up for at any day in the future. You can go to any day in the future, there's some shortcuts or you can hit the calendar there where it says custom date, and set a follow-up into the future. Now, as I'm talking to Jackie, I will typically wanna follow up tomorrow. So I'm gonna set it for tomorrow. Here's a pro tip for following up. Tell somebody when you're gonna follow up and do it, okay? And then when you follow up, you tell them, hey, I'm keeping your prompt, my pro I promised you I'd do this today and I'm doing it. Always let them know that. It's how you build trust, make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna log this connect and now you can see it's now added this follow up um, to her record. And you can leave yourself a note if you want. So I'm gonna put it in here, this is my first follow up. So now I'll know when I see that on my follow-ups list what this is. Okay, so now when I go to my dashboard and I go to follow-ups, now you can see there she is. She's on my follow-ups list. That actually moved her off my prospects list. She now lives on my follow-ups list for now, okay? So when I get to tomorrow and I see this follow-up is due, I'm gonna now, it reminds me to send her a follow-up. So what I'm gonna do is just like before with the regular connects, I'll go to my scripts and I'm gonna get a follow-up script. Follow-up number one, there it is. Hi, Jane, just checking in like I promised I would. What questions you have for me? By the way, I'm in love with that script. It's, it took me like 10 years to refine it down so simple. It works so great though, because it has, it has three different pieces of psychology built into it. Just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? So I'm going to copy that just like we did before. Okay, paste it in here and change the name. Okay, there it is. Ready to go? You can add emoticons if you want. Oh, I don't think I hit fall. I, I, no. I don't know what I did. I did something. So you don't even have to be good at computers to do this. You just keep going. You just trudge through it. Okay. So let's see here. Here, there she is. We're gonna send her this message. This is my follow up number one. Sent to her, boom, done. Super easy, I toggle back to Teamsy and I'm gonna log that message. Now, real, real quick, I wanna set a new follow-up. Just click on follow-up, set a new follow-up. So let's say I'm gonna do it in two days. Great. Log that connect, right? And I didn't leave myself a note, but I would've put follow-up number two. Next time I know, I'd come do follow-up number two. Make sense? In a couple days when she's due again, just go to scripts, get follow-up number two and send it. Isn't that easy? Start conversations, have conversations, find out who's interested, invite them to something specific. Put them in Teamsy on your follow-ups list and follow up like a pro, okay? Now real quick on this, how many of you think you could do that? Yeah, you see how you could do that and, and not let people fall through the cracks? Now, in the very beginning, I said something kind of audacious, which was 80% of the leads are falling through the cracks. How many of you intuitively know that's probably true? Do you guys, um, have you heard other trainers tell you that the fortune's in the follow-up? 
like all the time, right? It's like gag me with the fortunes of the follow-up stuff. But it really is. Here's what I want you guys to know. This is, this is statistical fact about all sales. 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up. 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up. This is why 80% fall through the cracks. How many of you follow up seven to 10 times consistently? Anybody? Most of the time, nobody raises their hand, maybe one or two. And usually they're the ringers I put in here because they've been through my training a couple times. 20% will close in the first three follow-ups. Those are the ones you've already got. But the 80% take longer. Okay. So real quick, how many of you think, think about um, following up 10 times like, oh my gosh, gross. I would never want to be that person. I'd be so annoying. People would hate me for that. Be honest. It's okay. Oh, good. So we've got the elephant out. We, we've exposed the elephant in the room. People are like, I'm not doing whatever he says next. I'm not doing it. Here's what I want you to know though. First of all, there is a way to do it. That's not annoying. People will be grateful for it. Okay. And I'm going to teach it to you tonight. I'm just going to give it to you. Super easy. There's just a couple of principles to follow. There's a couple of things that people say to do in follow-ups that are super annoying and that's why you don't want to do them. I'm going to show you how easy it is to not be annoying. But first I want you just to understand this. Let me just see hands for those of you who are really passionate about Juice Plus. Like you believe you can really help change people's lives. Let me see that. That's, hey, it's everybody. Okay, great. Good job, Jackie. <laughs> Good. So just think about the statistic this way. 80% of the people you could help, you will not help unless you follow up more. Okay? 80% of the people you could help, you will not help unless you follow up more. It does not matter how good Juice Plus is. It's irrelevant. If they don't get the products, it's not going to help them. The only thing that you have to offer them is your follow-up. Listen, I want you guys to understand this principle. This is my mantra. Following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. This, if you love people and want to help them, the only thing you can do is follow up. By the way, not following up because you're worried about being annoying after three follow-ups, that what you're actually communicating is, I just don't care enough about you to keep following up. Sorry. I know I said I'd help you, but you didn't respond. And so now I'm moving on. I was once at, a, at an event, uh, a super Saturday for, in another network where a top person, like a top leader said, I follow up three times and I'm like, next. And I said, wow, can I have the list of the people you gave up on? <laughs> I would love that list. And I'd just say, hey, I'm, I'm from so-and-so's team. I'm here to follow up. <laughs> and scoop them all up. Here's what I want you guys to understand. 80% of the people won't, won't um, even respond. They will not even respond until six or seven. How many of you have had somebody that was really interested? You were so excited. You might have even gone on a team call and said, I have somebody new. They're going to be great. And then when you followed up, you got nothing back but crickets. And you're like, I don't understand what happened. They ghosted me. Have you ever said that about somebody? They ghosted you. Here's what I want you guys to understand. This is just human psychology. Look, people have stuff going on. How many of you have received a message today that you haven't responded to yet? All of you have, come on. You get a mess. you send somebody a message and they're like, oh, cool. I'm not going to open it right now because I can't respond because the dog's thrown up at the baby. I got to go handle that, right? Or, or they're driving their car or whatever. They're making dinner. You know, I cooked dinner. I was cooking, grilling chicken right before this call. If you had messaged me when my hands were in the raw chicken, am I going to message you back? Of course not. People's life is happening all the time and they get the message, they see it, and they just can't do anything with it right now. They don't remember to respond. We all do this. Maybe joining Juice Plus or buying your products, maybe on their, on their list of priorities, it might not be in the top 10. It's number one for you, right? It might not be in the top 10 for them. It might be just some, a nice idea for them right now. So you just got to be patient. You just got to keep messaging people. Now, here's how you do it without being annoying. Okay, I'm going to give you two principles. And if you follow these principles, 100% of the time, people will thank you for following up so much. Here's the principle number one. Never ask them to do anything in your follow-up. Never ask them to do anything in your follow-up. Think about it. Steve, you're in the center of my screen, so you're going to be my guinea pig on this one. Imagine I call you on your phone out of the blue, unannounced. You probably won't answer it. And then I leave you this voicemail. Steve, call me back. 
I need to talk to you about something. That's like the most annoying thing in the world. I did everything wrong. First of all, never call somebody's phone unannounced. Everybody hates that. Since about 1995, nobody's like that, right? You don't talk to people until you set an appointment. Hey, let's talk. Do you have time to talk? We can jump on a call, right? But so that's the first thing. And then voicemail, oh my gosh. And then I'm asking him to do something, call me back. He's not gonna call me back. Don't ask them to do anything, okay? Don't ask them to do anything. They don't need to call you back. They don't need to message. They don't even need to respond. You're having an event. They don't need to RSVP. Don't ask them to do anything, okay? Number two, number two principle. Your follow-up message has to be written. They have to be able to read it. They have to be able to read it, and it has to be short. It has to be short enough they can read the entire thing without opening it, okay? So I'm sorry, you can't send a Voxer follow-up. You can't send a voice message. You can't do a video message follow-up. It has to be able to be, or you can, I'm telling you that it's annoying, okay? So you got, it's gotta be readable and short, why? Because they're not gonna open the message. They're not gonna open it. They're gonna see it on the lock screen in the phone. Look, I got a bunch of messages right now on my phone. I should be able to see the whole follow-up right there without opening it, why? Because I don't have time to respond, so I can't open it. And if I, you guys understand, right? Because if I open it, you can see I opened it. Now I feel like a jerk for not responding. So most people will not even open the messages. So when you say, oh my gosh, they're not even opening the messages, they don't like me. You do the same thing. Don't worry about it. They're seeing it if you follow these rules, okay? But everybody, whether their hands are in chicken, they've got a toddler crawling up their leg, they're driving their car, unfortunately, they all wanna see the message even though it's coming through. So keep it short and sweet and written and they'll be able to see the message. Here's what happens. Every time they get your follow-up message, there's nothing but positive. Oh, yeah. For a split second, they remember how excited they were about Juice Plus when they talked to you about it. And then their life takes over and that's fine. A couple days later, boom. Oh yeah. And then their life takes over and that's fine. After about three or four of these, maybe a couple of weeks, those people that are the 80% that don't respond, they're gonna be um, consistently hearing from you, feeling good about you, and then eventually you're gonna get, probably around the sixth or seventh time, you're gonna get this message that says, I'm so sorry I have not responded to your messages. Thank you so much for staying in touch. I really appreciate it. They will feel your care, and your concern and your integrity. And because you didn't do anything annoying and didn't require anything of them, they're gonna feel really obligated to respond and talk to you. Does this make sense? So if you follow those two principles, you can follow up as much as you want. And people will be like, wow, this person's really on top of things. Okay, you just put them in teams, you keep them on that follow-ups list. Every time you do a follow-up, set a new follow-up. You don't have to follow up every two days. I mean, follow up, I would follow up, you know, um, the, the next day and the next few, first few days in a row because that'll get you the 20% that'll respond right away. You'll get them in and then back it off a few days each time. And then over time, you know, those follow-ups might get a little farther apart. It might be a week apart, might be two weeks apart, but keep them on the follow-ups list forever. <laughs> if they've expressed interest and you've invited them, keep them on that list forever. Sometimes they may say, hey, now's not a good time. Message me in September. Great. Boom. Set it for September. And then you leave yourself a note in September. You say, hey, it's September. I'm messaging you just like you asked me to do. Okay, so it's, again, it's about building trust, about being consistent. Does this make sense? And so if you do this consistently five days a week, start conversations with people, make people stay, you're gonna be naturally uncovering people who are interested. You invite them, put them on your follow-ups list. That pipeline is full every single month. Every single month, people are joining the team, they're buying products, you're, you're hitting your, your numbers, you're getting your bonuses, you're, you're building that momentum on the team. Does this make sense? Okay. Um, let's go ahead and, I know I've given you guys a lot. So let's go ahead and do some um, Q&A. If you guys have Q&A questions that you wanna ask, feel free to ask away. Just unmute your microphone and ask and I'll be happy to answer anything. I want to ask you a question, Eric. So I've been using Teensy for a while. And um, the one thing that I, I don't know how to do, or if there is a way to do it, or if you've all thought about it yet, when we have events and we send out a lot of invites, mm -hmm. um, a lot of invites, and we want to, you know, have some sort of follow-up, it takes me longer to record all of those invites than it did to just send them out and, and so teamsy sometimes it's like, almost like i'm doing double duty 
yeah. I'm connecting and then I got to turn around and have time to then, you know, it's like, I'm almost having to do everything twice. Yeah. So sometimes it gets really frustrating. Is there a solution to that? Do you have some way to check off a whole bunch of people's names and say, I invited all these people to this event and it just fills it in or um, I know that you want personal relationship things each yeah. time, but sometimes our business isn't really like that. No, I hear you. But there isn't, there is not a way to do like a, like, like a bulk log. Um, but one thing that, one thing that a lot of people do find really helpful with events is using tags. So rather than logging them all as invites. So, um, Angela, if, if, it, if it was me, I would tag everybody that I invited to an event. I wouldn't put them in as an invite in Teamsy. And, um, the ones that I talked to at the event and I talked to the business and I invited to join me or I invited to, to buy products. Those are the ones I would log as an invite. So let me just explain. And I know it's confusing because you invited them to a party, but you invited them to the party where you are to an event where you're going to invite them to the business, right? And so what, really what I want you to log is when you've invited somebody to the business. So they have to get to the party first before we can actually do that. So let me just show you what I'm talking about real quick. Let me go to Teamsy because right now I, I can tell you're like, what the heck are you talking about? So look, if I'm on my team page, and um, I create an event, let's call it a uh, Sal and Jar Party, uh, July 16th. Is that a fair enough name? I'm gonna create a tag. Let's say I'm gonna invite Jana, and it's gonna be, I'm gonna call it my Salad in a Jar Party, 7 16. Okay, so there's my tag. Okay, so everybody that I wanna invite to this party, I'm gonna tag with this. So let's say I'm gonna invite Kathy, I'm just gonna put in that tag. And as soon as I put in a couple letters, it pops up. I invite Tessa. I'm just going to put in that tag. Okay, great. Let's say I'm going to invite Gail. I'm just going to put in that tag. Some of you who've never used Teams, you're like, what is he talking about? You don't need to know this yet. Just get in there and do some power. So look, let's say these are the people I'm inviting to my salad and jar party, okay? Just for sake of argument. You saw a quick, if you just went down your list and tagged all these people, now what happens is if I click on that tag, it gives me the list of everyone that's, that's invited. Okay? So let's say I invited 50 people, and that, so they're all on that list. So now I can work this list separately from my normal dashboard. So if I'm gonna send everybody a reminder about the party, I can come here and grab this list, and I can quick, I might not even log everything in Teamsy, that's okay, but at least I have the list. I can work down the list and I can mess, message all these people that, you know, don't forget to come to the party. And then what I would do is um, come through and create a tag that was like attended 716. Okay. And I might go through and I would hit all the people, I would tag all the people who actually attended that party. Okay. So these are just some things you could do to really work those parties so nothing falls through the cracks. And then at the end, I've got the, my attended list. Then I might go through and see who I want to put on, on, you know, get all them on my follow-ups list. Does this make sense? But it's also good, good data because the next time you want to have a party, you want to look at who came last time, who didn't come, right? So you can grab the list of people who didn't come and, um, and make sure you invite them again. I know you couldn't make it last time, but you have all that data in Teamsy. Does that help? Make sense? Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so then what would happen is the people that I actually had a great conversation with at the party about Juice Plus, that I'm gonna put on my, on my follow-ups list, those are the people that I'm gonna go in and log an invite and put on my follow-ups list and continue working with. So it may only be a small fraction of that original list of people that you invited to the party. She's processing that. <laughs> Do you, it, does anyone else have any questions? Eric, I have a question. I've not used uh, Team Z before, and so I'm just listening in because somebody recommended it. Um, and is it cumulative? So if you don't do it once a day, um, what happens to your list? You know, if it, it changes every day and you miss a day, how do you rectify that? It doesn't change every day. It's going to sit there until you connect. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't accumulate. So that, that's a great question. And that's the way we're kind of wired it, you know, cause that's the way we do it our jobs, right? If you don't work on Monday through Wednesday, you have to catch up. 
this is the kind I want you guys to think of Teamsy as just one day at a time. You just need to do today's power hour. If you if you fall off the wagon for a whole week, you don't need to do eight days worth of work. You just need to get in there and connect with whatever your goal for the day is. Okay. Yeah. It's like working out. If you get in a fitness program where you work out 30 minutes a day and you have an insane week, do you go in on Friday and work out six workouts in a row? No, you would hurt yourself, right? And the same thing is true of, of, your, of <laughs> working your business. You go connect with 60 people in one day, it's gonna be impossible for you to have conversations with all those people at once. So um, if, you, if for some reason you miss, you go on vacation, by the way, when you set that goal in Teamsy, it's based on a 250 day year. Are there more than 250 days in the year? Yeah, so it's based on the fact that you may not work seven days a week, you're gonna take a vacation, and you're gonna mess up and be a human being, and you can still hit your goal. So, Nicole, just get in there. If you miss a couple days, just get in there and use Teamsy today, whatever your goal is. My goal is 19 people, boom, go do that. Okay? Great. Yep. Now, what will happen is, if you're, if you're rocking and you're creating some momentum in your business, and you've got people that you're putting on your follow-ups list, because they're hot leads and they're interested, those will build and then you'll get in and you'll see that you have a hundred follow-ups due today because you didn't do any follow-ups for three weeks. That, that one will build and you'll have to chip away, but hopefully you won't be leaving interested people hanging like that. Right. right. Um, it's really important guys, the follow-ups, this is what happens in our business. Those people that you, that people follow up with three times and then let go, they don't go away. They end up on someone else's team. In many cases, how many of you have had people that you're interested in? They didn't respond to you and you were like, whatever. And then all of a sudden they're on someone else's team. You're like, what happened? Well, again, they just, they weren't ready when you were following up, you stopped following up. Somebody else started following up and they were ready. Does this make sense? So you got to just stay with them, stay with them. Some people will take longer. How many of you have a, have somebody on your team? It took more than a year to get onto the team. Yeah. Now here's the thing. It's kind of a, a lot of hands just went up by the way, but with teams, you're not spending a lot of mind here thinking about those people. They come up on your follow-ups list, psh, send them a follow-up. You move on to the next person. You don't have to think about it. You just let the system stay and keep you in touch. Does this make sense? You don't have to think and worry and stress. Oh my gosh, what are they thinking? Just send the next follow-up and move on. If you're using Teamsy consistently, you're going to be busy talking to people. You're going to be busy talking. When, when I used to work with real estate people building their businesses and um, real estate people, you know, they get caught up on one customer because they get a big check when they sell a house. It was like, when you have one customer, it makes you insane because all you think about is your customer. That's why you need to get 10, 15, 20 customers. Now you've got opportunities. Now you have people you can focus on that are doing, that are positive. Does this make sense? So Teams will keep you moving on that. So you can give people care, laser focus when they come up. And the rest of the time, you can just kind of like give yourself some peace. <laughs> Make sense? Okay. Any other questions, guys? I'm sure there's a few. I have a question, Eric. Okay. Um, so what about the opposite? If you have more than an hour to spend a day, say you're going to spend you know, three hours doing this, do you just keep how does that work? You just keep pulling in new prospects and customers that are just going to keep coming up on your list. And, and I'm not sure, or does it? Yeah. It'll, if you go past, if you go past your goal for the day, it will, it'll let you go as long as you want. It'll just okay. keep filling that list. Unless you run out of people, you know, it depends on how many people, you know, Okay. Um, that's one of the things that, that we've seen is people will come in, you know, they only know, they only, they put a small list in. they're like, Hey, I'm out of names. Now I got to wait 30 days for them to refresh type thing. So you just need to really think about, you know, who do you know and how, who can you put in there? If that makes sense. Um, but here's what I wouldn't do, Chris, is I wouldn't on your first day do three hours of connecting because you will get a lot of responses. I'll just share a personal story. Okay. So this happened to me. So, um, I don't, I'm not a builder in any network marketing company. Just so you guys know, Teams is my full time my full-time thing. But once upon a time, five years ago, I was a beach body coach. That, that was my thing. And I was into it. And, um, and I really wanted Teamsy for myself really. And so when we built it, the first version, I was the only person in the world who had it, right? It was me testing it. And I was so excited because Teamsy let me put my Facebook friends list into Teamsy. And so once they were all into Teamsy, I was like, this is so cool. 
So I started, the names would come up and I started messaging people. And um, I kind of got in the groove and I, I did it for about an hour. I was new and I, and I did 43, I reached out to 43 people, Chris. So I was like, wow, that was so cool. Well, because I started with my best people, I got almost 100% response rate. Now suddenly I was managing 43 messenger conversations. And it was insane. My wife was like, I thought this thing was going to save you time. You've been on your phone all day long. And so um, she finally was like, remember how you used to teach people how to block their time? So she got me doing those little time block periods where I would do my messaging. So it's amazing if you have like a 30 or 40 minutes blocked where all you're going to do is respond to messages. You're, it's amazing how many conversations you can have going, but it does get confusing. And I have sent the message to the wrong person a couple of times, that kind of thing. So um, it can be overwhelming if you do it once, Chris. But here's what I will also tell you. Um, I signed up 23 people to the business that month. So um, it was the best month I had in my business, but it was also super crazy insane. And it felt much better doing like five or putting five people in the business every month was much more fun quality of life for me <laughs> and just right, great. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So, um, so uh, what I would do with those three hours that you have in your day is maybe set aside uh, an hour where you can just have the conversations you started in your power hour, you know, and then I might, if it was me, I would probably use some of that other time to really think about um, putting really good content that shows my character and competence on my social media channels yeah. so that you could the, see the social media this is something that we teach in the boot camp i should probably talk about it huh De deborah since it's the last day for boot camp but one of the things we talk about in our boot camp is how to use your social media to build trust see people think of social media like um, i met this guy yesterday who's like the biggest hot shot in the world for getting new followers Right. Like he did the Kardashians. He did, uh, he created the, the, the grumpy cat. You guys heard of that. So he's like a hot shot for getting followers. He's like, Hey, do you want me to help you do followers? And I go, no, that's not my business. My business is trust. I build trust. So followers don't, doesn't matter in social media. What matters is that you're building trust on your social media. When you connect with somebody, they should be able to go to your social media and go, Oh, the same integrity runs through this as what I'm getting in my messenger wow, this person really knows about what they're talking about. I can see that they're living what they're teaching. They're walking the, their talk. And so we, our strategy on social media is to create a platform that builds trust with the audience along with the messages. Some people won't respond to those messages right away, but they'll go right over to Facebook, right over to Instagram and see what you're doing. Does that make sense? So it all kind of works together. So um, that's kind of a piece of it too. So it's, it's, a lot of the stuff that's being taught on social media is being taught to get you followers. What you should be focused on is creating a platform of trust. People can go, wow, this is a real authentic person who really is living out their mission and passion. And I need to get involved with that. Make sense? Okay. Eric, Eric this makes so much sense. I think we've lost Jackie. Her connection can be lost where she lives. But we want to say a great big thank you to you. Uh, this has been an awesome call. I'm so thrilled that we're going to have it in the recording. Uh, Debbie, do you have some closing comments? We, we appreciate it. Eric, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, is tonight the last night you can sign up for the boot camp? For the yes, third quarter boot camp? Yeah. But you can sign up for the free 30-day um, Team Z trial. Yes. That, right? That there's two separate things. So. Everybody on this call needs to go get a free trial if you haven't started it. Teamsy.com slash JP. Get 30 days free. After the 30 days is up, you can subscribe to Teamsy. For Juice Plus um, distributors, it's $19.95 US per month. So it's like 60 cents a day to have all this organization for you. And it's um, even less if you sign up for the year. It's like $16.97 or something. Correct. Oh. Yep. If you sign up for a full year, you get a little, you get an extra couple of months um, yeah. discount. So yeah. So wonderful just to throw it out there for you guys i know some of you probably have heard about the boot camp i know deborah's just signed up for it the third time in a row it's not because she's a slow learner it's because it's really supercharging her business but the boot camp is something additional that we do it's a training program um it's 12 weeks of training where you um each week you get a new training video on a different topic to help you really focus in on 
these aspects of relationship marketing. I've given you kind of an overview tonight. So you can become experts in them. We also focus on getting consistent. So it's an accountability group where you're going to be, we're going to be really helping you do this five days a week. Actually in bootcamp, we try to encourage you to do six days a week because we want to help you blow your business up big, but just getting consistent. So we get consistent doing what I showed you tonight. And then each week we add a new skill we want you to apply. Bootcamp is not one of those courses where you just go take notes in a notebook. We actually want you to apply what you're doing. So those of you guys who are interested in, learning about bootcamp. It actually, the registration for this quarter's bootcamp closes tonight at midnight. And let me put the link in the chat for you so you can take it out, check it out. It's teamsy.com slash bootcamp. Okay. Um, oh wait, I'm sorry. I sent it to Jackie Klein. I want to send it to everybody. And it's like 24 75 a week to have a personal coach help you run your business. It's amazing. Yeah. It's like less than a, a drip cup of coffee a day. So um, if, so those of you guys are watching this tonight, I know some of you guys are Brent, haven't even used Teamsy. About one out of three people in our bootcamp haven't even used Teamsy. They've, they're jumping right in on a recommendation of an upline or sideline or friend, and um, that's okay. We'll help you. We'll help you master the system as we go. Um, but if that is something you're interested in, the link is there. Check it out. I know there's probably a few of you will jump in there. We've had um, this is our seventh bootcamp. We've refined it as we go, and we've had um, really tremendous results. Um, I think the boot camp results, let's see, I got, if you go to that link, it actually has them on my site. Um, but people who have been doing boot camp have been averaging really, really big results in the first 60 days of boot camp. Um, <laughs> hold on, I typed in the wrong URL. How many of you guys are already at teamsy.com boot camp? You're already there. One of you guys, <laughs> one of you guys can. Tell me the stats. Okay, here it is. 16 customers and 12 recruits in 60 days. Okay. Obviously, not everybody's getting those results. Some people are, are getting better than others. But here's what I will tell you is that you will for sure get way more than you might do on your own because you're in that environment. You're getting the coaching, the training, the accountability. So um, take a look at that. If you guys are interested, we'd love to have you. Again, it closes tonight. If for some reason you miss... Um, you, you wake up in the morning, you're like, I want to do it. You guys find me and message me personally and I'll see if I can get you in. Okay. So, um, but anyways, I just wanted to say uh, to Deborah, thank you for, thank you for your trust. Really appreciate working with you. Thank you for organizing this call. I love the opportunity to talk to all of you. Thank you for having me. It's always an honor to share what we're doing, right? Share our passion and what we do and why we're passionate about it. So hopefully we'll see you guys in our Team Z family. God bless you. Have a great night. Thanks so much, Thank Eric. Thank you, Eric. We're grateful. Yeah.